on some papers, you can get a trial and improvement question. The trial and improvement question sets you up with an equation to solve, which we don't yet know how to solve it. We don't have the mathematics in order to be able to do that. So all we can do is try and find an approximate answer, and we're going we're gonna to use a trial and improvement method to do it. So the equation that I want to solve is x squared minus 4x equals 10. And as I say, we don't know how to solve this one yet. But we are told that there is a solution between x is 5 and x is 6. And we want to find this solution to one decimal place. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up in a table. So we're going to have our x's. We're going to have what we're substituting into and what we get, and we're going to have a comment, because our answers are either going to be too big or too small, which I will show. This is a lot of, well, most of this is going to be done on a calculator, so we're going to need to know where the squared button is, so on a Casio like this, the squared button looks like that, x squared. So we're going to start off with x is 5. And we're going to substitute that into the formula, effectively. So we've got 5 squared minus 4 lots of 5. So 5 squared minus 4 lots of 5, and that's just 5. Okay? And we know that the answer that we need to get is 10. This is my target. The target is 10. So 5 is too small. So we're going to try 6. So I'm going to try both these up values first, just to show what we're working with. So 6 squared, take away 4 lots of 6. 6 squared, take away 4 times 6, is 12. Well, my target's 10, so that's too large. So, if 5 is too small, 6 is too large, I'm going to try halfway through, 5.5. So, we've got 5.5 squared, take away 4 lots of 5.5. So, you can see this is why you need a calculator. 5.5 squared, take away 4 lots of 5.5, is 8.25. So, 8.25 is smaller than 10, so that's too small. So now we need to have a number that is larger than 5.5, but smaller than 6. So, let's try 5.7. 5.7 squared, take away 4 lots of 5.7. So you can see, partly, the choice of value is up to you. 5.7 squared, take away 4 lots of 5.7, is 9.69. It's close, it's close to 10, but it's not close enough, it's too small. So 5.7 is too small, we're going to have to try 5.8. So 5.8 squared, take away 4 lots of 5.8. 5.8 squared, take away 4 lots of 5.8, is 10.44. Now that's too large. Okay. So what's happened is that on my number line between 5 and 6, I know the solution is here somewhere. So that was too small, that was too large. Now, I then tried 5.5. That was too small. So I now know that my answer is between these two values. Then I tried 5.7. So 5.7 is about there. That was too small. And 5.8 was too large. So I know the solution is somewhere between those two values, between 5.7 and 5.8. But because I only want the solution to one decimal place, the solution that I give at the end will either be this one or this one, 5.7 or 5.8. And I need to determine which it is closer to. And the way to do that is to substitute in 5.75, the midway point, okay? And that will determine 
which it is closer to. So 5.75 squared, take away 4 lots of 5.75. 5.75 squared, take away 4 lots of 5.75, is 10.0625. That's too large. So if that midpoint is too large, then what I have, if I zoom in on that area, that's 5.75, that's 5.7, that's 5.8, that's too small, that's too large, that's too large, and so the value is closer to 5.7 than 5.8, okay? And that means that my own overall answer is 5.7 to one decimal place. Okay? And that's how I can use trial and improvement to home in on this solution. You can see that the gap that I was looking at each time was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's the whole point. You're homing in on the solution. And you only need that last one to determine either way, whether it's 5.7 or 5.8.